Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Java series. Uh, this time I'm going to teach you how to schedule tasks in Java. I know it's been a little while since I made a video in the series, but I'm back. So this time I'm going to teach you how to schedule tasks in Java. When I say scheduling tasks, I just mean creating a thread and not running it until a later date in the program. So what you can do here is create a thread in your program. Like before, if you watch my other videos in the series, you can learn about multi-threading and stuff like that you can create threads and stuff so what we're gonna do basically is create a thread and then schedule it so we can tell it when to run it doesn't have to run right away as soon as we make it right so that's gonna be pretty cool we can like set little timers and stuff like that with with the thread it's actually really simple to do and it's done with two classes the timer and timer task class and it works like this the timer task is the class that you use to hold the code for the task and then you create an instance of timer to be able to schedule that task. And when you schedule that task with the timer class, you can specify some pretty cool things like how long for the timer to wait before executing the task and how long you want to repeat it or if you want to repeat it at all and just stuff like that. You can customize it pretty good. So let's just begin by showing you how to create your very own task. So like I mentioned before, you can use the timer task class for this part. So um, the timer task is a class that implements the interface runnable. And runnable is important for creating threads if you remember the video I did on multi-threading. So the task I'm about to show you is really just a thread. Don't forget that. Tasks are literally just another name for thread in this case. So since our runnable interface is inherited in our timer task class, we can have access to the run method. And a run method in a thread is where we store the code for that thread. That's what the thread is going to run, right? So run is abstract, so let's just go ahead and create our own class here outside of the main class. We can create our own class that's going to hold, or it's going to represent our task basically, okay? So we'll just say the class that represents our task, just like that. Hopefully my keyboard is not too loud. If you want me to switch back, I'll do that. Um, so class eat people task. Well, that's what we'll call it. We can name our task whatever we want because it's our own class. So just name it something relevant to the task that the thread is going to be, right? So this, in this case, I'll be eating someone for some reason. So extends, and then we're just going to extend the timer task class because of course it's abstract or the run method is abstract. So we want to extend that class and then override the run method, right? So let's override the run method. Like I said, oh wait, we need to import that. So enter, alt enter, and that's going to import that for us. So now we'll do public void run, and it's already showing up down below as the um, for the autocomplete. So we're going to override that by you know um, putting it there, and then now inside of here, anything we put inside of here is going to be the code for our thread. So whenever we run this thread, whenever we schedule this task and it runs, this is the code that's going to be run. So we can put anything in here, but we're just going to put some simple stuff. So we'll say eat, um, eat all the people. So it's just going to pretend like it's eating someone. And then after that's done running, we'll just say end of task. Okay, so what we did here is really simple. All we did was create a task by extending the timer task class itself, which represents a task. And so this class is now going to be our task. So every time we create an instance of this class, we're creating a new task, basically. Okay, so we need to go down here and do that. So we need to do eat people task, and we'll just name it task1 is equal to new E people task okay so we're creating a new task here so now if you want to schedule this task if you want to run it in the future we need to specify when we want to run it and all that fun stuff so we need to create a timer so let's create a new timer here so timer timer is equal to new timer make sure you import timer from the utilities um, package of course there we go so now we have a new timer so what we can do here is take this timer timer dot schedule and we can and we can simply plug in our task right in there. So what that is going to do is schedule our task that we just created. And we get an error here says we cannot resolve method schedule. That is because, let's see here. That is simply because we need to also specify some other parameters. So there's different, you know, overriding uh, parameters or overrided parameters here. There's different options for the parameters that you can do. So the most simple form of it is just um, two parameters. So we can have long L, that's stand. And so what this is going to represent is the amount of milliseconds before you want to run this task, okay? So this just tells the task or the timer how long you want to wait before running the task. So if we put 5,000, for example, that's going to be 5,000 milliseconds, which is equal to 5 seconds. So the way this works is as soon as we execute the main method here, you know, which is basically just, you know, um, our program itself. So as soon as we start the program, it's going to count to 5 seconds. And, run, and once our program reaches 5 seconds, it's going to execute this task here okay pretty simple stuff and also don't forget the way threads work of course that um, this thread here that we're scheduling is going to run alongside our main thread so it's going to work concurrently so 
basically whenever you run this code here and it waits five seconds or whenever the thread starts the main thread will still be running in the background or at the same time really not in the background but it's still gonna be running at the same time so if there's code after this it's still gonna run even though you know it hasn't run yet or whatever it's still scheduled so just don't forget so just don't forget our task and our thread in our main thread are gonna run at the same time okay so let's try running so and just see what happens Okay, so as you can see here, it counted to five, that's why it took so long. It counted to five, and then it said, eat all the people, end of task. But as you can see here, our program does not say exited, or it doesn't say program finished, or anything like that, like it usually does. It's just blank, right? So that means our program is still running. And that is because this task here that we just scheduled, and this thread that we just started, is still running. Even though it printed out whatever it needs to print out, it's still running. So we need to finish it, we need to cancel it, or whatever, okay? So what we need to do here is to timer.cancel. And so what that's going to do is end our task that we just ran. And so now that task is going to end and therefore the main method doesn't need to run anymore. So the program is going to shut down. So the reason the main method still runs and the program still runs is because, you know, the main method represents the whole program. So it can't stop until everything else stops, right? Pretty simple. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's run this again and see what we get. So as you can see here, something a little different happened. It actually executed the program without running the task, basically. So what happened is it goes line by line, right? That's how code runs, if you know. So... It went here to here to here and once it got here it scheduled the task but since it's going to take five seconds it went all the way to here you know this is the next line of code but well it doesn't count white spaces so this is the next line of code so it canceled it as soon as it scheduled it because the main method is still running right so even though it's waiting five seconds it's still going to get here and then cancel it and then therefore the program is going to end right there okay so what we really need to do is tell the main method to wait before going to the next line of code because then if it goes to the next line of code like it did that time it's just going to cancel it right so we need to make it wait five seconds you know so what we need to do here is basically tell the main thread to wait five seconds or you know above five seconds it doesn't really matter just wait as long as it needs to wait before it cancels the thread okay so we could do thread dot sleep and then we can just tell it to sleep for five seconds because that's how long our um, our task here is taking and so we can just catch that we need to catch this exception here interrupted exception just like that okay boom okay okay so let's try running this again and see what happens okay so it started one two three four five and there we go so ends eats all the people end of task and then right after that the program ends okay so the way this works is basically it's scheduling this task here and so after it schedules this task after it runs this line of code this is going to start running uh, up to five seconds and once it reaches five seconds then it's going to run the task as we know but right after that the main method is going to go on okay so after the main method goes on it gets to here and it's going to say okay main method we need to sleep for five seconds so it's going to shut down the main method for five seconds basically and of course, five seconds is enough time to let this run here. So eventually the timer is going to reach five seconds and then it's going to run our task here. And so, sen and so since our task is running, um, it's going to run that and then it's going to end the program. So hopefully that makes sense. I know it's a little confusing, so just pause the program and work around with it and play around with this if you don't understand it. But yeah, so anyway, um, there's other things we can do. Um, we can uh, add more parameters here. So we can do control P to see the other, pr other parameters. And so we can add a third parameter if we want to. This is going to be... Um, if we want it to repeat, we can choose how long to repeat it, okay? So how many, um, how long to wait before repeating it after it runs the first time, okay? So for example, if you want it to run every half second, like really fast, then we could just do 500 like that, okay? So let's try that. So it's going to wait 5 seconds, and then after that, it's going to start repeating every half second, basically, okay? There we go. Of course, it doesn't go farther than that because it's, it's only sleeping for 5 seconds. After that, it's going to cancel the program. So what we should do here is just get rid of this for the time being so we can see it play out for infinity. I'm going to show you how fast it goes. So five seconds and then eventually it's going to run the task and then it's going to repeat every half second, right? Because that's, that's how the timer is scheduled. So that's pretty cool, right? And of course, it's never stopping because we never canceled the, uh, the thread. So therefore, the program is just going to run forever because the main method can't shut down unless everything else is shut down, basically, okay? So we can put this back by doing Control z And so we can stop this. And that's pretty much it. That's how you run a, a schedule. So if we go back to the timer itself here in the constructor, we can see Control p there's parameters that we can add here. 
um, for the string one. That's if you want to give it a name for some reason. I don't really know why you wouldn't want to do that, but if you want to, um, you can give it a name. Um, and then also you have the boolean. That's just to create what's called a, a daemon thread. I don't know how to say it correctly, but it's like a special type of thread. But don't really worry about that. But that's pretty much it for this episode. I taught you how to do... This console is big. I just realized it's covering like the whole screen. But anyway, um, hopefully this all makes sense for you. If you have any questions about what I showed you today, you can ask in the comment section below. Um, all the code from today's episode is going to be in the description. There's a link there. You can click it and then bookmark it for future use in case you want to come back to this in case you forget how to do any of this task stuff. Um, it's going to look like this. It has a bunch of comments next to it so you know it explains it basically. So if you forget how to do it, you don't have to watch the video. You can just look at this and it'll show you everything, okay? So anyway, um, that's pretty much it. Again, if you have questions, ask in the comment section below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.